Bangladesh haven't played India in a million trillion years. The big three teams hardly play them at all. Not one, but two of their bowlers were called for chucking mid-tournament, and they lost to Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan. They lost to Pakistan. Pakistan. So after all that, they're beating India. They were beating them early in their innings. They were beating them in the middle of their innings. They're even beating them at the end of their innings. And then Raheem hits what should be the all but winning runs. He rides an imaginary victory pony. And Bangladesh don't make a single run again in the match. Andy, how, why, what? Yeah, she's not the only one. Uh, Kim Kardashian has got a tattoo of uh, former Somerset seamer Colin Dredge on her left. Jared! Yes, Bangladesh. Yes, they will be disappointed not to have sealed that particular deal. Uh, they went to pieces, unfortunately, like a cheap sandwich in a tumble dryer being pushed over a cliff during a significant asteroid strike. Uh, from the position they were in, they, they probably should have won. In fact, them not winning was roughly equivalent to a cyclist in the Tour de France, reaching Paris with a solid 25-minute lead over his rivals, about to bomb up the Champs-Élysées to take the yellow jersey when he cycles into a taxi, says, airport, please, and gets a flight to Buenos Aires. You simply have to take those kind of opportunities at this level of cycling. Cricket, cricket, at this level of cricket. As for India, while well, they often say that a team that can win despite not playing very well, must be a good team. I guess another way of looking at that is that a team that can win, despite not playing very well, might just be playing other teams that also aren't playing very well. I guess we will find out soon, uh, probably on Sunday against Australia. That is when the proof will be eaten in the pudding. So, Doc... Explain England's betting against Afghanistan and you're only allowed to use words of one syllable or fewer. Uh, shouldn't be that tricky. I'll pass on that one. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, I'll grant you we did rather get away with it. Uh, although, in mitigation, the pitch was completely and utterly unplayable. That wasn't. Good point. But the night was very, very, very difficult seeing conditions. Uh, awful seeing day. Uh, the light uh, beams were all off kilter due to the orbit of Neptune coinciding with the solar flare ups Yes. Right. And it was a plague of locusts. No, there wasn't. Yes, it was. Big ones. Big, hairy locusts. So, Doc, is that uh, an excuse, an explanation, or a lie? Potato, potato, potato. But we still don't want to peak too early. Well, you've already done that, Doc. You peaked in about 1956. Don't be silly, Frederick. We are former World T20 champions. Some nations I could mention can't say that. And we will have our second major international tournament in this life or the next. Here you go, Maximus. Here you go. We've been forced to watch Pakistan, often against their own will. We've been forced to watch their fielders run around the ball, fumble the ball, not be that close to the ball, or just lazily wander in a bit of a haze after the ball. We've been forced to watch Afridi misuse his bowlers, his field, and his batting lineup. And we've been forced to watch Pakistan bat, which I think in some parts of the world may be a war crime. But I think what we really know at the moment is that Pakistan are not playing T20 cricket. So I ask you, Andrew, what were Pakistan playing in this tournament? And should it be banned? Yeah, the real reason uh, Watson's retiring now, what I heard, was uh, he's been headhunted. A uh, new face of L'Oreal. Jared, uh, yes, good question. What were Pakistan playing? We don't know. We are still waiting for the laboratory tests to come back on that one. I mean, at times it did look like cricket. At other times it even looks like Pakistan cricket. But then a lot of the time it did look more like a group of motorcycle mechanics trying to cook a Michelin-starred meal in a high-end restaurant. It wasn't entirely clear who was doing what or why. It was just clear it wasn't working. And some other news just coming in. Uh, I'm going on holiday. Uh, I'm going to miss... The rest of the tournament, I'd love to tart it up as some kind of uh, protest against uh, the marginalisation of cricket's associate members, uh, but uh, it's just a family holiday. But don't worry, uh, I'll cover it up. No one is going to notice, so uh, you can just leave this. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I'll uh, see you in a, in a couple of weeks. Spring break! Salzman's going on holiday? Well, he's not taking us with him. What kind of behaviour is that? Well, I guess, Doc, we shouldn't be that surprised at an Englishman leaving a major international cricket tournament early. No call for that, Frederick. Anyway, 
I actually think England have a pretty good chance. Do you? Oh, yes. Do you? Uh, yes. I'm sticking with yes, yes, uh, yes. People say to me, Coach Cricket loves there. When I am chasing 109 to win, and I am 69 for 2 in 11th over, what is the best way to win T20? And I said to them, oh, you must collapse straight away and properly. You win by 6 or 7 wickets with 3-4 overs to spare, who cares? Everybody complacent. You win by 1 wicket with no overs and no balls to spare. Everybody go crazy. Big boost to team morale. England women, I tip my clothes to you. Strategic perfection. 